Hello, I'm Christy Welch, Direct Marketing Specialist with Ohio State University Extension. And coming up, we have an example of a small cooperative here in the southern part of Ohio that did a marketing study to figure out how effective their marketing dollars were working for their business. So if you have questions about how to do that for your own, join us in just a moment. Hello, my name is Lori Netherow with Buckeye Valley Beef Cooperative, and today I'm going to talk to you all about our SARE project on direct marketing strategies for small cooperatives or farms. So a little bit about where we're going with this presentation. Uh, we'll first start off with talking to you about who Buckeye Valley Beef Cooperative is, and then we'll get into um, the North Central SARE grant and the process for applying for the grant. And then we're going to go into our study, uh, as well as what we found from our study, some lessons we learned along the way, looking forward, and some steps that you can take to implement into your personal businesses. So to start off, Buckeye Valley Beef Cooperative was founded in August of 2016 by the Bolanders. They reached out to some family farms in Southwest Ohio, uh, and we're all located in Brown County, Ohio. Uh, to see if there was in, some interest, and there was. Um, and after we found a, about four farm families to begin with, um, we developed our business model um, and worked very closely with Ohio, um, Ohio State University South Centers um, and Hannah Scott, uh, the program manager there, um, to help us develop our cooperative. Um, our mission is to provide a safe and local, healthy source of naturally raised beef, but at the same time, we also want to strengthen our local economy and preserve the traditions and heritage of our family farm. So with that, I want to share with you a video we had a family friend create for us. So uh, the cooperative model comes without, um, it doesn't come without any challenges. Um, one of our biggest challenges as a cooperative is the minimal working capital that we have to buy uh, supplies, to ship product, and even to pay for advertising. Uh, advertising is our biggest cost and our biggest barrier to growth. And when we were working with Hannah Scott, she had mentioned to us uh, that there was a few grants out there to, that specifically applied for, um, uh, towards things that we were interested in uh, to grow our business, and one of which uh, was advertising. Uh, we had noticed that there wasn't any tried and true advertising methods for local cooperatives like us. Uh, and we didn't want to just kind of throw our money around willy-nilly when it was very valuable. There wasn't much of it to begin with um, without having any kind of tried and true methods to back up what we were going to do. So we applied to the uh, North Central SARE grant program and uh, through the Farmer Rancher grant program and we were accepted. I will say that it did it was our second attempt at the North Central SARE grant. The first year we did not get accepted, but we did use the peer review um, that we get back as a result of applying to the program. Uh, and we modified our uh, grant proposal and submitted it the following year. And we were successful the second time around. But we applied to the Farmer Rancher Grant Program which has grants um, offered to either individuals, to teams of two, or to a group um, like us, and the projects can last up to 23 months, and they fund about 50 projects a year. Now, each of these projects specialize and focus on sustainable agriculture, research, and education, and they also include an outreach component uh, that you have to share your results of your project with others so that they can learn from your uh, trials and tribulations and your findings and successes as well. So the grant program is, is listed below. If you have a grant proposal that you're interested in, in 
um, I would recommend that you go ahead and get started because the proposals are due in early December and the grant process is no easy feat. Uh, it takes a little while to perfect it and to get it just right. Um, and so starting now would give you the time that you need to, to get there, to get it done and to get it edited and just the way you want it. So on to our funded SARE grant project. As I mentioned, we did want to focus on advertising methods specific to small farms and local cooperatives, small local cooperatives. And um, so our funded SARE grant was comparing the effectiveness of four advertising channels. Um, we had three project objectives and they were to introduce four new advertising methods and we chose billboard displays, radio ads, Facebook ads, and Google ads. Then we wanted to measure the impact of those methods. We took before uh, baseline data and then looked at the variables after the implementation and compared them for our results. And then we wanted to share the strategies we used in the product project with everyone. So uh, this is part of our share project objective. So a little bit about our project timeline. We wanted to space out our implementation so that they didn't overlap. We also wanted to allow a month in between each one to account for any uh, lingering sales that might be associated with another implementation. The first advertising method that you can see is Google Ads, and we did this from April to June of 2019 with a month break, um, then to, to gather our, our end data uh, and then our baseline data for our billboard, which we implemented in August to October of 2019. We did our Facebook ads in December of 2019 to March, which did um, butt up to the beginning of COVID-19. And then our radio ads were from April to June of 2020, which was also during the entire period of COVID-19. And we'll talk a little um, in the next coming slides about how COVID-19 may have skewed our results. So the first implementation we did was Google Ads. And we focused on this one because it is the up and coming um, newest and latest technology that a lot of uh, small businesses or really any kind of business are focusing on today in marketing and advertising. And um, we, had a, we started off with a budget of 325571 And if you know anything about Google Ads, you'll know that there are Two types, of dis, two types of campaigns. So there's a display campaign and there's a search campaign. The display campaigns are those that are ads that you might see in your newsfeed on Facebook or if you're reading a blog on the internet and you notice the ads that pop up on the side, those are display campaigns. And those are usually um, ads that are posted to websites that have similar content as your ad. So for instance, our Buckeye Valley Beef Cooperative ad may show up um, on various uh, food websites or um, farming websites or mom websites or anything that we chose to kind of target in our um, advertising campaign. So the other type of campaign is a search campaign and those are the ones we ended up doing. Uh, so search campaigns are where you are actually targeting the words um, that people search on Google and you're bidding on them so that your, the hope is that your product shows up at the top of the list when somebody types in those keywords. So um, local beef near me or Ohio beef, um, when they type those words in, our hope is that we become the top search on the website. Now, if you've ever been on Google, you'll notice that there is um, ads that populate the top of your search. And then under that, if you keep scrolling, there are um, the actual search engine results that come up as a result of your words. The ads are meant to kind of bypass the way that Google functions with its search engine optimization. So let's say you're a brand new business and you haven't been out long enough to get that search engine optimization you need to be at the top of the list. Um, ads are a productive and, and quick way to get your name up there and start um, reaching out to your customers. 
So as I mentioned, we used two search campaigns and one targeted all our small bundles and our direct to door delivery. And then the other targeted our traditional bulk beef sales. Each month we reevaluated and we adjusted our keywords. You'll find that the keywords you think that your customer are going to use to search for you are probably most likely different than what you had initially selected. So at the end of each month, you'll get, a you know, you'll see how you did and you'll get results and you'll understand what words people were searching to get to you. And then you can readjust those keywords and, and get ones that better fit your organization and what your customers think of you when they, when they search for you. So nobody ever gets it right the first time around unless you're really good at this stuff. And then we used Google Analytics to track our progress. And Google Analytics is a beast in and of itself and took us a little while to learn um, along with figuring out Google Ads. And by no means are we experts on this. Um, we're looking at it from the perspective that you would as a small business owner or a farm um, manager. You know, we're not marketing experts, but that's kind of the point of this experiment. So our Google ad results, we did not initially see any significant increase in sales, our customer numbers or our customer location. Um, we did have 15 customers self-report their exposure to Google ads when they ordered. And I didn't mention yet, but another way we tracked our sales and how they were attributed to a particular um, advertising method was that at the conclusion of each order that a customer submitted, they would also select a uh, method in which they heard about us. Um, and so there's some, there's some downfalls with self-reported exposure, um, but in this case, we thought it was a very valuable asset to have um, to help us to verify our sales numbers. So our sales attributed to Google Ads was 4,800, um, 4,875. And then that was a 50% return on investment. So it was semi-successful. But if you consider the amount of time that we spent in um, educating ourselves on how to use Google Ads and how to use Google Analytics, um, initially we, we didn't think it was worthwhile. So the second advertising method that we implemented were billboards. And I should say billboard, we only implemented one because the budget on billboards is outrageous these days. Um, the image that you see is the image of our billboard, our particular billboard. And we use Lamar companies who graciously helped us to design our logo or to design our image that you see. So the good thing is, if you're like us and not a marketing expert, don't be intimidated. They will help work with you to design a, a billboard that best fits your needs. So our budget for our billboard was $6,000. And um, Lamar Companies also helped us to target our demographic area. We had some thoughts on where we wanted the billboard to be located. Uh, we shared that with them and their marketing experts kind of looked at our demographic data and, and decided um, they helped us be more confident in our decision on where we placed our billboard. So our billboard was placed along a major artery highway in Loveland, Ohio. And for billboards, uh, there wasn't much interaction on the internet other than within our website. Um, so we used our order form to track our self-exposure to the billboard content. Our billboard was a big flop. Um, I was able to use Google Analytics to track our website traffic um, by, our, by the search location. So if you've never been in Google Analytics, you can actually track where a customer searched you from. Um, and so our increase in traffic from Loveland, or our traffic from a Loveland area increased during this time period, which was nice, it means people were actually taking an action um, as a result of our billboard and getting brand awareness. But no customers actually self-reported exposure to the billboard during or immediately following the billboard advertising method. 
Now, during COVID-19, four orders were placed that had selected the billboard as um, where they heard about us, um, which was interesting. Um, and another reason why we think COVID-19 might have been a great natural experiment for this project. Although on its face, it, it looks like it may skew the data, um, we think that it actually was um, helped this project along. So that resulted in $3,780 in sales, which was a negative 37% return on investment. Now we chose the billboard method because we had used yard signs previous to this. And I know a lot of farmers do the same thing. And we had had some success with that. Um, but one of our friends has a uh, family member in marketing and she had said that a lot of times you actually have to flood the market area with that billboard, not just one location, but several to get their attention. Um, so, you know, it might be something that another Sarah Grant wants to look into. Um, for us, the budget's out of our price range um, and it wasn't successful enough for us to pursue it again. So the third advertising method we did was Facebook ads. And our budget was $600. And we actually used the boosted post advertising method. There are a couple of ways we believe um, to do this. You can do boosted posts where you put a certain dollar uh, amount on a post to boost it um, to attract more customers within Facebook. Or you can use like a sponsored ad that shows up in your newsfeed on Facebook. We chose to do the boosted posts because we had done them a little bit prior to this study um, and had a little bit of success. So we wondered what it would look like on a bigger scale. Um, so we have a few teachers that work in our cooperative and they helped us to create a timeline of three months. And they use that timeline to kind of draft out posts that told a story. Um, so within a 12 week period, we told a story using our posts. We used Google Analytics to track, track our progress, and then we also used the order form to track self-exposure to, to the Facebook ads. So Facebook was a resounding success. We had 78 customers self-report exposure to our boosted posts during their ordering, which resulted in 66,000 in sales and a return on investment of 10,900%. Again, I will say, the very end of this advertising um, implementation did butt up to the beginning of COVID-19, but we were already seeing significant success prior to um, the COVID-19 outbreak. So we think that it might have affected it a little bit, um, but ultimately we think we would have still had the same results uh, or similar results in a time period that did not have the pandemic. So the final implementation we had was the radio ads. And uh, we had a budget of $14,640. So it was our largest and most expensive advertising method. Um, we, had, we chose radio ads because we had done radio advertisements with a local um, radio company on a much smaller scale and a much smaller budget and had some success with it. And we had heard that radio advertisements um, are pretty successful just because people are often in their cars traveling from one location to the next. So we wanted to test that theory out. And we also chose to advertise on NPR. We looked at demographic data for our, our individual um, organization. And we noticed that a lot of our customers seem to come from a, um, a demographic area that seemed to be attracted to NPR. And so we thought that that was the best fit for our organization. Now, if you're going to spend that kind of money and advertise, we recommend that you look into various radio companies. They also can provide you with the demographic data for who, who often um, re who their radio station reaches out to. And you can compare those demographics to yours. And that's what we did and ours matched very closely with NPR. So we went that route. And they also, along with, along with Lamar companies with the billboard, 
they helped us create our ad. So don't be hesitant to, to reach out to them and ask for help on their marketing um, sound bites. Um, we're not marketing experts. And so we are very grateful to have their advice on helping us to create this. So once that was created, we were advertised in a 22 slots per week and a total of 348 slots for a 12 week period of time. Now mind you, I didn't mention before, but all of our advertising methods did have the same time period. For so our radio uh, results surprised us a little bit. We had 30 customers self-report exposure to the radio ads, which resulted in $27,090 in sales and an 85% return on investment. So we were a little concerned about making our money back with this advertising method, and we did. Um, so it was pretty successful. It wasn't as successful as Facebook advertisements, um, but pretty successful. Uh, again, this did happen during COVID-19, but a lot of these people who called us had mentioned that they had been looking for a farm that offered beef, you know, farm fresh beef, and this gave them the outlet to do so. So we think of COVID-19 as the cause for why they ordered with us, but the radio ad was how they heard about us. And that was captured very quickly because of COVID-19. And that's why we think that COVID-19 was a great natural experiment. So to summarize our results, Facebook had the best return on investment for 10,900% followed up by radios, 85%, um, and then Google ads at 50%, and our billboard ad at the end for a negative 37%. Now, we did notice some other notable findings with our self-reported question on our survey. Word of mouth in Google search actually ended up being our highest um, method in which people have heard about us. Um, word of mouth, at 153 customers, 129,000 in sales, and Google search for 143 customers and 156,000 in sales. Um, word of mouth, however, had to stem from somewhere and very likely stemmed from one of those four advertising methods we've spoke about because we didn't implement any other advertising methods during this period. So, you know, it would be interesting if somebody had a SARE project that could look into, you know, the various methods of which word of mouth, um, you know, work. But essentially, we gained a customer through that Google ad, Facebook, radio, or billboard who then shared our product with their friends and family and created more sales. So ultimately, these returns on investment are the minimal for the actual advertising method. Um, they very likely included um, varying amounts of that word of mouth as well uh, due to just people talking about amongst it with their friends. So it goes to show you that these methods continue to be an investment for you later down the line and um, word of mouth then works in your favor and helps you to keep up that, that advertising method long after that advertising method has ended. Google search um, was also a combination of people searching directly for us or indirectly through keywords. And that's why search engine optimization is really important for your organization if you want to have that direct to market relationship online. And um, there are lots of ways that you can increase your search engine optimization. Um, it's out of the scope of this actual project um, but there are lots of tutorials online that can help you to do that. So again, just a visual aid on how um, our results all worked out. And as you can see, the smaller piece of the pie was attributed to our research methods that we implemented. Um, the larger piece, again, kind of an invariable um, or an indirect variable that's associated with one of these four. We just don't know which ones. So what did we learn from this project? Well, our findings definitely surprised us. 
Um, and then Google ads was supposed to be the way to advertise these days. Um, and for us, it wasn't as successful as we had hoped. Um, it was difficult to navigate. And um, we think maybe it could have been that by the time that we had kind of gotten the hang of it, the, the trial period had ended. We also think that it might be necessary to hire somebody who has some kind of experience with this. But again, this, this study was meant to capture what works for small farms and local businesses or local cooperatives. And we just can't afford to hire a marketing expert. So if that's the reason that this advertising method failed, it's likely not a good fit for us. So billboards was also not profitable. Um, again, we, we did this method because our yard signs, you know, in our local community were pretty successful and we thought having a major billboard on a major highway would, would definitely be successful, but for us it wasn't. Um, and again, there could be future SARA grants that look at, you know, various ways to use billboards that might be more profitable than what we saw. And then our Facebook ads. Those definitely surprised us because we had actually been told by um, some marketing experts, especially in agriculture, that they were starting to stray away from social media advertisements and go on to things such as Google, Google Ads, um, YouTube, those types of directions um, that they just weren't finding that Facebook was as profitable as it used to be. But for us, it very much was. Um, and if you're just starting out in advertising, we kind of recommend you might start that route because you can do it very inexpensively to begin with, get the hang of it, uh, see what works, what doesn't, and you're not out a lot of money to experiment with it. Finally, radio advertisements were surprisingly effective. I'd like to see it implemented another time outside the pandemic just to, to verify our results before I want to spend that kind of money again um, to advertise. But we did have quite a few who called in looking to order from us and because of the lag um, and time that we had um, because of processing dates um, and the the long wait list that we had because of COVID-19, we had a, a lot of people kind of straight away and decided not to buy. Um, so that could have also affected our um, end number of, of customers who actually purchased from us. Uh, but it was surprisingly effective, especially given that it was the most expensive method. So looking forward, we'd like to see this study implemented in another time period outside COVID just to verify the results. But we have come to the conclusion that COVID-19 worked in our favor and allowed us to have customers buy very quickly during our time period that we had this research study. Um, and we were able to then capture the reason why they bought from us. So as you can see, people bought from us from a billboard from last October um, this year during the pandemic, but maybe it, it would have been another six months or so before we would have heard from them had COVID-19 not happened. So um, that, that I think worked in favor of our experiment. Um, brand recognition, word of mouth, and Google SEO is very important to your organization. So um, keeping up those Facebook posts, being transparent with your customers, it may seem like a lot of work up front and oftentimes it doesn't feel like it's getting you anywhere, but ultimately it does and it builds that word of mouth and it builds that Google SEO um, and it keeps you at the forefront of your customers' minds. Um, so when a pandemic does break out, they know who to go to. And so I can't stress enough how important it is to keep that transparency with your customers. So what can you do as a result of this study? What are your next steps? Well, we highly recommend that you create a website and make sure you optimize those SEOs. And you can do that, alt text, pictures, redirecting um, social media sites to your website, blog posts that continuously refresh the traffic to your page, your page, getting articles and magazines to write about you and link back to your website. There's all sorts of ways to optimize those SEOs. Um, like I said, there are lots of tutorials, LinkedIn Learning, course, Courses RA that you can, you can look into to learn how to do that. 
We also recommend that you create a business page on all the popular search engines. So Google, Bing, Yahoo, you can go in, claim your business, um, record your hours of operation, your phone number, the address to your office, um, so that customers can reach you and they know when you're open and when you're closed. Um, and it also, it allows the search engines to put you up further on their list because they know you're an actual um, business. I was unaware, but there's also another component to Google. It's called My Google, My Google Business, and I actually took a course on this through our local chambers um, that talked about it. They even use it more like a social media site. You can put posts on there um, to continuously refresh traffic to your page, and um, it also is taken into account when it comes to your, your SEOs and getting you closer to the top of that list when customers are looking for beef or whatever it is you're selling. So make sure if you haven't activated your My Google Business page that you do that. Start a blog. Um, for us, it was to reach out to our customers and um, serve as kind of our educational piece, um, our, part of our mission to educate our consumer and be transparent. Um, but it also serves another purpose. It keeps refreshing the traffic to your page, um, and that is important as well. Keep that strong social media presence. Whether boosted or not boosted, your customers need to know who you are. You need to stay on their minds all the time. Um, but hopefully this study has given you some confidence that what you're doing and, and all that work you're putting into those posts are actually making a difference. And then when you go forward and move into the advertising um, elements, we recommend that you start small. So start with those Facebook posts, um, see what's working. And then once you're comfortable and you're, and you're getting enough sales, maybe start looking into um, Google ads and radio ads. Um, move your way up and, and start building that, uh, that word of mouth advertising um, where people have heard it from you because um, it, it pays off.